everybody. Welcome to Impact Ministries. We're not really funny. So yes, we're funny. Lower this your is, expectations. This is, no. <laughs> this is Chris. Chris is going to co-lead with me tonight. My name is Trish. And we're going to change the format up just a little bit. We're going to do the announcements first and um, let you know what goes on at Impact Ministry. And then we are going to go into worship. And so when worship begins, when worship starts, if you want to get up, move around, if you want to kneel down, if you want to come up here and use this as an altar, if you want to dance, you want a flag, go for it because it's between you and the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So let the Father minister to your heart. Let him bring revelation to you. Let him bring healing to you. And uh, after that, we are going to go into probably some corporate prophecy, but OJ will be giving the message tonight. And then after OJ's message, we are going to go into prophecy. It could be corporate, it could be individual, it could be both. We do have um, leadership in the room that probably already have a microphone in their hand. And uh, those leaders, we're going to like tag team and probably call on them or they will let us know if they have a word for someone in the room. And so that's pretty much how we flow. Can I say something about worship that the Lord put on my heart today? I've been reading this book by Arthur Pink, and it talks about the gloriousness of God and how we talk about glorifying God, but the, the truth is we can't add to God's glory, nor can we detract from it. Nothing that we do, he is glorious. And so, you know, worship isn't about singing, it's about our heart towards the Father, but songs help because they give words to our heart. They don't add to God's glory, but we'll move from worship to teaching to prophecy where we hope to hear from the Lord, but worship is our chance to speak to him. It's our chance to tell him. It's our chance to let our hearts speak to him. And anyway, it was just a thought I had on worship That was a great thought. So join in. Worship. That's where we get to minister to the Father. You're not engaging in worship. You're engaging with the Lord. Absolutely. So um, we're going to go to a few announcements right now and get that out of the way. Would you like to go first? Depends if it's the long Go ahead. No, go ahead. Okay. Welcome to Impact Ministry Center. This is Impact Thursday night. We are at the Mountain Brook Retail Center, 2260 Holly Springs Parkway in Holly Springs, Georgia. For those of you watching, if you'd like to come visit us on Thursday night, we start at 7. You should come. It's wonderful. And this will be a night of worship and teaching and prophecy. And you'll definitely all be blessed. And then Friday nights, every other Friday night, we have Friday night fire. It's prayer. Uh, We don't have it tomorrow night, but it is from 7 to 9. Again, it's in the same location. And it is um, currently Joanna and Nathan are leading that up. It's worship. It's getting the Father's heart. Literally submitting to the Father. Father, what are you saying? What do you want to have prayed out? What can we agree with? How are we supposed to move with you? What's our part in this? You know, for the harvest, for the revival. So um, for the people that we connect with every day. So that's what Friday Night Fire is. It's, it's very freeing. It's, um, it's always an encounter with the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Always. Tuesday night, School of the Prophets. This is, we are in our third week, I believe, of, out of six for this. Um, if you're new, newer to prophecy or you just want to learn about prophecy, how to give a prophetic word, this is a great opportunity. Um, you can come. You can sit under James's teaching. You can actually practice hands-on experience. It's a much different environment than this. It's very participatory. I think that's a word, right? That's a good word. You get to participate (laughs) and give a word um, (laughs) and get feedback and get training. Uh, It's a time of learning and sharing, but the Holy Spirit is always there. And it's such a faith. I've been coming for a while now and such a faith builder to realize that what God put on your heart during the week, he put on someone else's heart during the week because, like James said, he's not schizophrenic. He has has a consistent message, and if we seek his heart, we will hear it. Absolutely. It's a wonderful opportunity. Absolutely. If, you, if you'd like to come, we'd love to have you. You don't have to have come to the first couple of meetings. You can come this next week, and that's great. Yeah, jump in. Just come on and jump in and learn, and learn what the Father's voice sounds to you. It's, it's different for everybody. Some people see things. Some people hear things. Some people see and hear. Some people just get impressions. And so it's a great training ground for you. So, Father, we just thank you for this amazing time. We thank you for this group of people that are in this room, the ones that might be streaming, Father, on Facebook or even looking at it later on YouTube. We just thank you. We, we just want 
your presence, Father. We want your presence. We want to, we want to, we want more, more of you, Jesus, more of you, more revelation, Father. So we surrender our lives to you in this moment, in this time. We humble ourselves under your mighty hand. And oh, I'm saying it like over and over again. That's awesome. So anyway, let's just go right into worship. <laughs> So let's just stay in that atmosphere of worship and let your, your melody bring, bring glory to the Father. So, Father, we are humbled tonight, and we just thank you for the opportunity to come and to gather in your name, to come and to receive ministry in your name, to come and to, to release ministry in the name of Jesus. There is no other name that's higher. There is no other name that every knee and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And as far as we are concerned here, Jesus Christ is Lord. He is the Messiah. He is the Redeemer. He is the Savior. He is the Son of the Most High God. And so um, I'm just going to read this one scripture, and then I'm um, I think it ties in with this song, but the back of that gentleman's T-shirt, it said, God is near, the sweatshirt. I don't know if anybody saw that. And what the Lord whispered to me was, I'm closer than the breath, your breath that you breathe. I'm that close. I desire to have fellowship with you that much. I can change your life. I will change your life. I will let you fulfill the dreams that are inside you, for they came from me, says the Father. And if you're out of dreams, ask me for more, he says, because he is a river and a well that never runs dry. So this is from, and I don't have my regular glasses, so don't make fun of me. <laughs> they already did that. Am I going to repeat uh, my words again, James, or is everything okay? <laughs> it's okay, because we were, like, talking twice. So it comes down to this, since you have been raised with the anointed one, the liberating king, set your mind on heaven above. The anointed is there, seated at God's right hand. Stay focused on what's above, not on earthly things, because your old life is dead and gone. Your new life is now hidden, enmeshed with the anointed one. So who wants to apprehend their new life? Like, do we have it all? Does anybody have all the answers? Does anybody understand God? I don't, I know. So I want more. So I'm going to read that again. Your new life is now hidden, enmeshed with the anointed one who is in God. Thank you, Lord. On that day when the anointed one, who is our very life, is revealed, you will be revealed with him in glory. So this is what it says. So kill your earthly impulses. Okay, this is from the voice. So forgive me, but I'm going to say it anyway. So kill your earthly impulses, loose sex, impure actions, unbridled sensuality, wicked thoughts, greed, which is essentially idolatry. It's because of these that God's wrath is coming upon the sons and daughters of disobedience. Wow. Sons and daughters of disobedience? That, we don't want to be that. We want to be sons and daughters of the Most High God, a friend of God, a child of God. So, at, so avoid them at all costs. They are the same th they, these are the same things you once pursued, and together you spawned an evil life. But now make sure you shed such things as anger, rage, spite, slander, and abusive language. And don't go on lying to each other since you have slothed away your old skin along with its evil practices. Gosh, have we been saved? Have we been redeemed? There's so much that he's taken me out of. I'm so grateful. For a fresh new you, which is continually renewed in knowledge according to the image of the one who created you. We are continually renewed in knowledge according to the image of the one who created you. Who created us? This is interactive. Somebody can say God. Anybody? God? Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Participation. In this recreation, there is no distinction between Greek and Jew, circumcised and uncircumcised, barbarian and conqueror, or slave and free, because the anointed one is the, is, is the whole and dwells in us all. And so, Father, we thank you that in you we are whole. We thank you that you do dwell inside us. We thank you that we have the ability to hear you and to listen and take correction and redirection and receive your blessings and impartation and to move us forward in, in the kingdom of God on earth because we are, you know, kingdom of God come, thy will of God be done, but the kingdom of God is inside us and we are bringing down the kingdom of God from heaven and we are walking it out.
And so we just thank you for that privilege and that opportunity. Teach us to sit at your feet. Teach us to stay humble and repentant before you. Teach us to go low, to, to have each other's back, to pray for those that when you bring someone to our mind that you're saying, what do you want to do with that? And we're saying, we're going to pray for them. Father, show me how to pray. That's prophetic prayer. He'll tell you how to pray. So, Father, thank you that we remain faithful in that. In Jesus' name. And so now you have the opportunity to, we're going to take a, an offering. You have an opportunity to give to the Lord. And so we're going to pass the buckets out. And OJ is going to come up and he's going to minister. OJ is a man of God. OJ is the son of the most, uh, of, of God. He is a friend of God. He is a powerful minister. And tonight the father showed me that he's going to be shooting some arrows through OJ and his words, and they are going to be arrows of healing and deliverance and freedom, and they're going to carry the fire of God. And so we are in for an amazing treat, so welcome OJ. Father, we thank you for your word today. We thank you, Father, that is your word that transforms us, heals us, delivers us, and makes us whole. Father God, we love your word. Like David said, oh God, it's sweeter than the honey on the honeycomb. So Father, we want to thank you for the word who's Christ. And we want to thank you for your written word. For you have declared that man shall not live by bread alone. But every word that comes out of your mouth. Oh, Father, feed us. Feed us until we want more, oh God. More of you. More of your son. That in our souls we can say we can never get enough of you. Because God, one seed can transform our lives. We give you the glory and the honor and the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. So tonight I want to title this, The Lord is the Good Shepherd. Not, I didn't start off by saying God is your good shepherd. I start off by saying God is the good shepherd. And why do I say it that way? Because whether you believe he's your good shepherd or not, he still is the good shepherd. Sometimes we think the way we see God in our lives change his status. I start by to tell you that God is who he say he is. Now when I believe it and receive it, then I can say Jesus Christ is my good shepherd. But whether I believe it or receive it or not, I stop by to tell somebody Jesus Christ is the good shepherd. He is the good shepherd. He's not just a shepherd, he's good. He's real good. And we got to get that in our hearts and get that in our spirit that we serve a good God. We serve a good God. And I'm coming from uh, the scripture that says, this is one of the scriptures. Ephesians 1 and 3 says, Ephesians 1 and 3. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. Praise be to God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who have blessed us in heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. So the Bible is telling us that in Christ, everything we need is already there. But how do we access that that is in Christ? And I believe it's a principle that Jesus laid down seed time and harvest time. Paul says in Galatians 6 and 7, he says, do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. Whoever sows to please their flesh, from their flesh reap destruction. Whoever sows to please the spirit, from their spirit will reap everlasting life. From the spirit, from the spirit will reap everlasting life. See, we are looking for a revival. But my question, my challenge to us tonight, what are we sowing? Because according to the scripture, God cannot be made fun of. God's word cannot be taken lightly. The Bible says, whatsoever man sows, that he shall reap. So we're not sowing anything. We're not going to reap anything. We said, Lord, I won't revive and some of us don't even pray. We don't even have.
have time to pray, to seek God, to call on his name, to seek him out. If you're not sowing nothing in prayer, don't expect to reap answers in prayer just because he's God. Sometimes we believe that we don't have to bring nothing to the table, but because we're under grace, God just give you everything. God don't have no free meal plan, y'all. Faith without works is still dead. Now, I know we don't preach works in terms of salvation, but guess what? You got to do something in this thing, babe. You got to bring something to the table. Whatsoever a man what? Souls is not so working. Aren't you? You got to sow the what? The seed. This is what God showed me in Mark 4. Jesus began to tell the parable about the soul. And he says, the seed is the word of God. And he told his disciples, if you don't understand the parable about the sword, then you cannot understand any of the other parables. Because the key to growing spiritually is sowing the word of God in your heart. And God is the one that brings forth a harvest. We are chasing miracles, but who's chasing the word? Who's chasing truth? Y'all, miracles come and miracles go, but miracles do not sustain the movement of God. If that's the case, everybody in Israel during the time of Jesus in Jerusalem and Judea should have been born again because the miracles he did should have made everybody say there is a God. But at the end of the day, the same people he gave miracles to was the same people who said crucify him. Why? Because Jesus said they did not understand his teachings. Y'all, if we're going to see revival, the, the, the word and the miracles got to join and become one. We can't have two camps anymore. We can't have the camp of miracles over here and the camp of the word over here. Well, you know, I believe in the gifts. I believe in the gifts too, but I know the gifts can't sustain me. I know that, yeah, there's power in the name of Jesus, but Jesus is also the word. So God says in this revival, that's why with the oil in the Bible, the oil is flowing out of the Bible. See, I believe it because I believe it's a sign that God is saying that the word and the anointing is about to flow as one. And you won't be able to separate the two. And if you have the anointing, you're going to have the word. I'm not chasing miracles. I'm chasing him. I'm chasing Jesus because I want the good shepherd. And my prayer is that we want the what? Good shepherd. And this is what the Lord began to show me about this. See, my job is to give you the seed. I'm not your sword now. See, you're your own sword. The Bible says the former sows the what? Seed. My job is not to sow the seed into your heart. My job is to hand you the seed. Now, what you do with that seed, it's on you. See, we want to blame the preacher for everything. But all I can do is give you a seed. Give you a, a what? Message. Now, what you do with that message, most of us, by the time we get out the door, we forget most of it. Very few of us pocket the seed and take it with us and go do something with it. And we're wondering why year after year nothing is changing in our lives because we're not planting anything. And if you don't plant nothing, you're not going to reap anything. See, I'm going to give you a seed tonight. What is the seed I'm giving you? Jesus Christ is the good shepherd. That's my seed. Now, what comes with Jesus being the good shepherd? He's going to provide for you. He's going he's to protect you. He's going to comfort you. He's going to lead you. He, he knows you. He's going to speak to you. See, when you know Jesus as the good shepherd, these are the benefits. David said, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not what? Won't. When Jesus is your shepherd, you should not live in a place of need. Even if you're lacking, you're still not in need because you know he, got, he has you. 
When Jesus is your shepherd, why are you fearing the devil? When he says, though you walk through the valley of the shadows of death, you shall fear no evil, for I am with you. Uh, you, my rod and my staff comfort you. We spend too much energy on the devil when the Bible says he's under our feet. And we should be celebrating and praising our God. Because if Jesus is the good shepherd, the devil may roar, but he can't attack me. Because I ain't living in a place called fear. I'm living in a place called faith. That's where it's time for the church to live. So turn to your Bibles. John 10. I'm going to start at John 10 and 10. John 10 and 10. Jesus says in John 10, it says, The thief does not come except to steal, to kill, and to destroy. I came, I, well, it says, I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. The thief whoever the thief might be, has come to do what? Steal, to kill, and to destroy. And we want to focus on what the thief is doing. But tonight I stopped by to tell somebody it's time for you to experience what the good shepherd is doing. He says, I, the good shepherd, has come that you may have what? Life and that you may have this life more abundantly. That we should be living, not waiting to die. I don't know about you. I ain't waiting for the rapture to come. If he decide to come and rapture me, praise the Lord. But I ain't sitting back burying my treasures because I'm looking for a crown, y'all. I, I want that crown that Paul talks about. I want when I stand before him, and I pray that this is our heartbeat, that when we stand before him, he says, well done, my good and faithful servant, because you followed me, and you didn't follow the crowd, and you didn't follow the opinions of man, but you followed the good shepherd. And wherever I went, you went because you was in love with me. That's what I want the testimony to be. Not that O.J. sat down and was waiting for some disaster to happen. It's going to happen. The question is, when it does happen, what's going to be my position? Am I going to be whimpering and crying with the world? Or I'm going to be standing, pointing the way, saying Jesus is the way. Jesus is the truth. Jesus is the life. The world may be falling apart, but there's a kingdom that never falls apart. And there's a king who's king of kings and lord of lords. That needs to be our testimony. That needs to be our what? testimony while the world is trembling with fear we should be doing what the song said we should be shouting hallelujah how can you shout hallelujah in the midst of a disaster because you can see and you can behold the king of kings and the lord of lords and your eyes is on the good shepherd and you are watching wherever he goes and you know wherever he takes you, even if it's in the fire, you go through the fire with him. We're afraid of the fire. But if you're going to make a difference in this kingdom, if we really the remnant church as we declare we are, you know, we always come in the remnant. But do you know the remnant going to be persecuted now? <laughs> you know the remnant going to go through the fire. So, so, so a lot of times when we say we are the remnant, we think we are exempt. It gives us special privileges. But if you're really the remnant, you, you, you step on some toes. If you're really the remnant, you're going to stand on God's word no matter what. And you're going to go against the status quo. And you're going to declare, I'm in this world, but I'm not of it. See, the real remnant is not going to holler in a little circle and say, y'all, let's the remnant get together. The true remnant is going to grab hold of God and go out there and begin to bring others in. If you ain't going out there to get nobody, are you really the remnant? Because the Bible says he leads the 99 and go after the one. But if you're really the remnant, you're going to go through some things. 
The thief does come to steal, kill, and what? Destroy. That means there's a real enemy that we are fighting. But we should not be afraid. There should be no fear in our heart. Why? This is why. Jesus tell us why. Verse 11. He says, the thief, he says, I came that they may have life and they may have it more abundantly. Then he makes a, a declaration. And see, they understood what he was saying when this, this statement. He says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. Now, we're reading it, and we won't grab it as quick as they did because they knew the Old Testament. And they knew what David said. David says, the Lord is my shepherd. So Jesus came on the scene and said, now the scripture has been fulfilled. I am that shepherd David was talking about. David said, the Lord is my shepherd, but I want to add another word to it. I am the good shepherd, and I came to lay down my life for my sheep. See, the good shepherd lays his life down for us. Why? Because it demonstrates his love for you and I. Y'all, Jesus has already given his best for us. What was his best? His life. So everything else is very minute for him. God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory. Y'all, that's easy for him. But the question is, how do you see him? Do you really know he is the good shepherd that David was talking about? That you shall not want? He makes you lie down in green pastures. We know the uh, scripture, but how many of us believe it? How many of you can see Jesus and say, Jesus, I'm going to follow you no matter what? You know, I, I, I just baffle over Christians. You know, I'm under grace and I'm not under the law. I, I say, if you're truly under grace, you ain't got no problem obeying God's law. If you're truly ungrace, you ain't got no problem being the lie. I ain't got no problem because you know what? The good shepherd knows what's best for me. So if he tells me to do something, I'm going to do it because I know he knows what's best for me. Why are we wrestling with, with God's truth? Well, you, you, know, you know Jesus was under the old covenant. No, I, I, see, John, John gave me this scripture. I had never read it. It's found in uh, Luke, I mean, Matthew 24. And Jesus says, heaven and earth shall pass away. But not one word I say shall ever pass away. Do people read that? He says not what? See, first time he says every word that God says shall not what pass away. But in Luke 24, he said, I mean, Matthew 24, he says, every word I've said shall not what pass away. So when God tells me, when the good shepherd says, love your neighbor as yourself, I ain't got a problem with that. You know why I ain't got a problem with that? Because I know he knows what's best for me. I know he knows that I'm here to represent the father. And if I'm representing the father, I got to love my neighbor. I got to love my brothers and sisters in the faith as Christ have loved me. Why? Because it benefits the kingdom. And whatever benefits the kingdom and the king, it benefits me. See, when we get a kingdom mentality, you ain't going to have to wrestle with people by being holy and living righteous. Why is it a fight? Well, why are we debating whether I should live holy or not? If Jesus is your shepherd, you will live holy. Now, if he's not your shepherd, because the Bible says the good shepherd leads you in the path of what? Righteousness. Watch this now. So, therefore, if you're not being led in the path of righteousness, and that's your lifestyle, and that's where you live, and that's where you dwell. I got to ask a question. I ain't here to judge your salvation, but is Jesus your good shepherd? Because he ain't going to lead you into sin. He ain't going to lead you into wickedness. He ain't going to lead you into bitterness. He ain't going to lead you into anger. He ain't going to lead you into a place called unforgiveness. He don't lead that. He leads us into righteousness. What is righteousness? It's God's way of doing things. So the good shepherd leads you into the path of what? Righteousness for his name's sake. Not for your name. Not for your reputation. Do you know Jesus don't care about your reputation? And he don't care about my reputation. He cares about the father's reputation. And that's why the Bible says he made no reputation for himself, but he took on the very nature of a he, um, he took on the very nature of a servant. He humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on the cross. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. But I got a question. Do the sheep 
lay down their life for the good shepherd. He who loves his life will lose it. But he who loses his life for my name's sake and the gospel will have eternal life. See, we're trying to hold on to my life, and I'm trying to hold on to his life. But I heard him say in Revelation 3, if you're lukewarm, I'll spew you out. Y'all, I hear the Lord saying no more compromise. We either going to follow the good what? shepherd. Why? Because he laid down his life for us. That's the point I'm making. I'm going to follow him. Why? Because he laid down his life for me. And I can only, I can't give him anything. But with my life, I can live a life of gratitude. That everything I do is to please the father. That's all I can give back to say thank you. Thank you, good shepherd. Because you didn't have to choose me. You didn't have to call me. It says, I am the good shepherd. I give my life for the sheep. Verse 14. He, he makes it again. And, 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 and I think it was uh, Daniel who said this. It said, I think he said, when God speaks twice, it means something has been established. 14 says, I am the what? Good shepherd. And I know my sheep and am known by my own. Y'all, that's the point I want to make today. Another verse he says, and you go down, he says, he told the Pharisees this. He says, you don't believe me because you're not my sheep. Then he laid out the criteria for his sheep. He says, my sheep know my voice. My sheep know my voice. I know them and they follow me. So the main criteria we need to know Jesus is to know his voice. And to know his voice is to know his teachings. Y'all, it's just that simple. We trying to figure out some great revelation and just fo follow the simplicities of the gospel. Blessed is the poor in spirit. Blessed is the merciful, for they shall be shown what? Mercy. So if I know his voice, I'm going to show you mercy when I really should show you judgment. I should condemn you because you've wronged me, but instead of condemning you, I, str I, I stretch out the hand of mercy. Why? Because I know his voice, and his voice is a voice of mercy. His voice is a voice of loving kindness. He says, I am the good shepherd. I give good things to my sheep. I take care of my own. And I hear him say, tell my people, stop worrying, stop stressing, and stop fearing. I know you. I know you. I know you by name. I can call your name. I'm intimate with you. When did I come intimate with you? When you got born again. Because you went from one kingdom into another king. See, many of us are still striving to get him to know us. And he already know you and you haven't realized it yet. He know you because his blood cleansed you. His, when, he knows you because the Bible says you was joined with him in his death and you was joined with him in his resurrection. So when he got up, you got up with him. And the Bible says uh, he who's joined to the Lord is one with him in spirit. God is declaring tonight, I know you. You belong to me I have a responsibility to you but you must believe my word and you got to take my word and plant it in your heart so you can have seed time and harvest time if you plant this word in your heart tonight that Jesus Christ is the good shepherd and begin to meditate on it I promise you, my brothers and sisters, no matter what you go through, you will see him as the good shepherd in your time of need. And instead of uh, 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 becoming fearful, you'll start of praising and saying, Father, I thank you that you're making me lie down in green pastures. Father, I thank you for divine peace. 
Father, I thank you that I'm, I'm your sheep. You know me and I know you. I know you. You know how I know you? Because I know your word. I know the way you talk. I know the way you think. How do I know the way you think? Because I have your message. I'm your disciple. I follow your teachings. I'm a student of your teachings. I love your word. I know your word. I know what you will and will not do because I know your teachings. Y'all, this thing is not complex. A baby can get Christianity. We make it so deep. Let's go deep. No, just get the simplicity of it. Let's get the easy part down, and, and he'll take you deep. What is deep? I, I'm still looking for the deep. Because it looks like the deeper I go, the more I see myself, and the more I see I'm messed up, and I need him. So I think deepness is just knowing him more. When he reveals his nature and his character to us, and when we become like him, then I say that person is deep. I'm going to tell you what I call a deep person. I'm about to finish. I call a deep person when they talk about Jesus, you can feel it. When they say Jesus is their good shepherd, you know it. It, it, it oozes out, out of them. When they call God their father, and when they call him Abba, and when they call him daddy, it ain't just words. I, I'm, I've only met a few people in my life like that now. And I'm not one of them. But when they talk about God as father, oh, you, you almost looking like, man, I want that. Man, I wish I had that type of intimacy. See, that's what I call deep. I don't call revelations deep. Because witches can get revelation. Satanic folks have dreams and visions. Buddhists can raise the dead. They have done it. Do all kinds of stuff, but they have. But to know him and to be close to him and to wake up every morning and know that he's speaking to you and you can hear his voice. You can hear the almighty calling out to you saying, come, follow me. Come this morning and let me take you where I want you to go. When you can hear his voice, and this is the way, follow it. When you can hear his voice comforting you in your dark hours. Y'all, that's the Jesus we want to be deep in. That place where you land. I remember one day I was laying on my couch, and, and, and I, I was so discouraged. I just said, Lord, Lord, I, I'm frustrated. You don't say nothing. You ain't doing nothing. Why am I a Christian? See, you got, I talk to God like that because, you know, if it's in my heart, I might as well say it. Well, I, I ain't going to say it, but it's in my heart. And, you know, I heard the Lord speak to me. I heard him speak this. He says, OJ, you are mine, and I'm with you. And that he gave me that scripture about when you go through the fire, you won't be burned. When you go through the water, he gave me that scripture. When you go through the water, you won't be drowned. And he says, why? Because I love you. Why? Because I love you. Why? Because I love you. And that scripture encouraged me to say no matter what I was going through, I was going to make it. He didn't give me some blessings. He gave me a, a true scripture. He says, you're in the fire, but it won't burn you. You're in the water, but you won't drown. And he says, based on one reason, I love you. When the good shepherd loves you, he's going to watch over you, keep you, and protect you. But see, if you don't know him as the good shepherd, and you begin to listen to strange voices, y'all, there are strange teachings, strange doctrines. You know what? Your own mind can be a strange voice. What is a strange voice? Anything that contradicts truth. Anything that contradicts the teaching of Christ, I labor as a strange voice. And many times we are listening to the strange voices. But I hear the Spirit saying, but who's going to hear my voice? Who's going to listen to me? I'm calling. My sheep know my voice. So if you're a sheep today, I want to tell you something. You know his voice. And if you think you don't, just get in the Word a little more. Meditate a little more. And you'll find out when the Holy Spirit talks to you. He talks about three things. The Father. 
That's what he loved talking about. The Father, the Son, and the Word. He does. Now, he'll talk to you about other things, but those are the three things he loves to talk about. And you want a good conversation with him, get in the Word, and he'll start talking to you. And you walk, and all of a sudden, the Word is bubbling up in you. If you really want to talk to him, you get to talking about the things of Jesus, and all of a sudden, you'll hear him speaking to your inner man. Because he loved talking about the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. He don't even talk about himself. So if he don't talk about himself, why are you going to spend all this time talking about you? I close with James' statement. This thing is not about us. It's about the good shepherd. And we choose him to follow him. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you. Good word, okay. That went perfectly with, with the message. Thank you, OJ. We all needed to hear that. Um, there's just no words for that. So we're going to move, transition into corporate prophecy and individual prophecy. And I already, um, I do know that Joanna has a word, and I know Bill needs, would like to share something as well. So, um, I have a couple of individual words, but I'm going to have to bring Joanna up right now. I hear the Lord saying, taste and see that I am good. My children, I am looking for a generation that won't just want things from me, but that will want to know my heart. For I long to pour out my heart on a people that desire to seek me and not the things I do for them, but to seek my face. For I call you children for a reason because I am your father and I desire to share all that I have with you. For this is an hour that if you will seek me, you will find me. If you knock, the door will be open unto you. But it will be those who seek that will find, and those who knock, the door will be open. For do not be surprised that those you think who don't seek will find, and those you think that aren't knocking will have the door open. For the generation I'm crying out to is the ones that are seeking, they're knocking. For I am good. Taste and see that I am good. Shake off religion. Shake off the things that hold you back. Shake off the past moves. Shake off the past expectations. For where I am taking my bride is a place she's never been. For deep cries out to deep in the place of my waterfall. But first you have to know me. First you have to seek me. First you have to trust me because I am the good shepherd. And my desire is to take care of my sheep. I will never, never lead you astray because I only know the way and the way that I lead you is to the way of the Father. So please come, try, taste, seek, for I am good and I long to be with you. Thank you. I have a corporate word also. The Lord showed me a picture of this red balloon, and I went to grab the, it was just floating, and I went to grab the string, and he said, don't grab the string, and he said, it's full, and I said, what's it full of, Lord, and the Lord said, sorrow, and I said, what kind of sorrows, and he said, pain, offense, rejection, physical trauma, broken relationships, he said, don't grab the string, let it rise, and don't pop it or you'll contaminate your environment. He said, let it rise to the throne. Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Because we have to get rid of this stuff because we've got to quit being about our business so we can be about the Father's business. And there's a piece that only the Father can do. And that red balloon is red because it's covered in the blood of Christ and he's done it. And our piece is to not reach out and grab it and not keep pulling it back into our life and not pop it and explode it all over our lives. 
I'm, I'm going to tag on that because, as, as Chris said, the red balloon and, and don't pull it down into our life. And, and God's not going to fit into our life. The Lord says, I'm not going to fit into your life. You're not going to cause me to conform to what you would like, what you want to do, where you want to go, and who you want to be. Because when I did create you, as OJ said, as your good shepherd, I created you with purpose. I created you with destiny. I created you with a unique identity that is only yours. And he says, my people are identifying with the world. My people are identifying with the neighbors. My people are identifying with Hollywood. You're identifying with, with the music industry. You're not identifying with me, says the Father. Tonight's been a night where he's been shooting those arrows. He used that message. And when we were in the back praying, I already said this once, but those message, those arrows were on fire. They were on fire. Did you catch any? The Father says, did you catch any in your heart? What has he been ministering to you so, so far tonight? Has anybody received ministry? Has anybody received revelation? This is interactive. You get to raise your hands. If you don't raise your hand, you're a liar because God's been moving in here. So then you need to repent for being a liar, right? So, so when we are ministering corporately, um, take it personally. Don't say, oh, I want a word. I need a word. Oh, God, just give me a word. He's given you a word. It's called the Bible. Read it. He's given you the word. It's Jesus. That's what you need, because when he does release a prophetic word from one of his servants, you'll be able to receive it, agree with it, run it, run with it, and do your part. Um, Bill has a prophetic, um, he's got something he wants to share corporately, and then we're probably going to move into some individual prophecies, because I've got a few already. Let's see if mine works. Yeah. I don't know if this is called a prophetic word. I, I think it's a testimony, but it's a, it has somewhat of a prophetic word in it. Um, it's mostly, it's just from my heart. Um, in the late 70s, I was saved, filled with the Holy Spirit, baptized in water at Mount Perrin Central. And um, it's a great time. So here I am 40 years later, there's this revival up in Dawsonville and they're talking about being baptized in fire, which I, I've actually been baptized in fire. I know because God burned up so much stuff in my life through one season. Um, but I was praying because I just felt the unction, like the Lord wanted me to go up there and do it for some reason. So we, I kind of talked, we talked, we prayed. And the thing is... Um, I was asking him if he wanted me to go, and it was a couple hours later I heard him say, no ifs, ands, or buts, and I was, I was like, I heard that something startled me, it was so clear, but I went, but what does that mean? What are you, what are you, what are you saying? It's kind of dark speech. So I have a tendency to go to the prophet Google, and I did that. What does no ifs, ands, or buts mean? It says, now this is Saturday. I'm praying if I should go Sunday, right? So I will start reading. It says, no reservations, restrictions, or excuses, as in, you'd better be there tomorrow. You better be there tomorrow. So I went. And, and this is the personal part. Because when I went... I like work I like looking at words. I looked up the word Dawson and I found that the medieval nickname for David was Daw, D A W. It says so Dawson essentially means son of David. The name David comes from a Hebrew word thought to mean beloved. So, and Ville obviously city. So Dawsonville is the city of my beloved son, which is what God spoke audibly from heaven when John was baptized. And he was saying that to me Sunday when I went up there to get baptized and fire, he was, he said, he said that to me, you know, 
You're my beloved son in whom I'm well, in whom I'm well pleased. So what I'm trying to tell you is, I, and if you read on, it says, God spoke that audibly from heaven, but it says some people said it thundered. So this is the part from my heart. In the late 70s when I was saved and baptized in the Holy Spirit and baptized at Mount Pier and Central, I probably heard thunder. But Sunday I heard, you're my beloved son. And, um, and I have been baptized in a little bit of fire. I've, I've been very fiery <laughs> last few days. Um, so we'll just see how that plays out. Amen. So, OJ, just uh, I heard it said one time, and I, uh, you know, where you said, um, go deep. I say, you, and I heard it said well, and I've yet to contradict it. You know, it's when they can figure out, love your neighbor as yourself, then you can go deeper. Um, but I'll just say it was interesting tonight. It was God gave me a word earlier in the week, and then it was interesting because during the music it was confirmed, and then it fit in exactly to what OJ said. So earlier in the week, I during my quiet time, I had a, a vision. It came through like the movie Moneyball. And if you've ever seen the, the movie Moneyball, it's it had Brad Pitt and Jonah Hill. And the whole thing was about simply about getting people, uh, building a baseball team around people that did ordinary. And so they were only to get people to, that got on base. They didn't want the big home run hitters. They wanted people that just got on base. And if they got on base, good things would happen. And while we're singing, the, the word came to me, and it said, to get to extraordinary, it comes through the ordinary. So how are you being faithful in your ordinary? Uh, and so, you know, so as I'm sitting there, and like, and for what? Let's not make it more complicated than it needs to be. And our ordinary needs to be locked in what the Father says in Micah 6, 8. He says, I've told you, O man, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you but to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with the Lord your God. So be extraordinary in your ordinary. Yeah, we're going to probably move into some individual words, and Chris has a word. I do. I'm horrible at remembering names, though. Tell me your name again. Brittany, can I give you a word? Brittany? Okay, so when I came over earlier, you were reading your Bible, and the Lord said to me, he said, give her the notebook. And I actually brought this to give to somebody else, but they don't know it, so it's okay. <laughs> And it says, and so then I went and I read it. I hadn't read what it said. It said, her mouth speaks from that which fills her heart. And so I, I wrote in here what the Lord wants to tell you tonight. He says, read to hear me, not to learn. And he's going to speak to you, and he's going to give you words, and he's going to fill this notebook, but it's not going to stop with you because it's never meant to stop with us. It's going to flow out of you, and it's going to encourage many people. God bless you. That's awesome. I'm also hearing for you, I'm hearing that you are God's melody, that literal musical notes do come out of you when you worship and when you, when you praise him. And you have a scribe anointing. That's why you got that book. But he's saying to write because you're going to be writing lyrics to some, um, some you're going to be writing songs. You're going to be writing poetry. You're going to be writing love letters to Jesus. And they're going to go, they're going to be, they're going to be spreading like fire. They're going to change lives. So he said, don't minimize the gifting, that scribe anointing, that writing, because that is intimacy and time with me, says the Father. That is as important because you're listening and you're receiving and you're asking me questions. That's what prayer is. Prayer is not, let's, let's us do all the talking so God can't get a word in. You know how to listen and sit and receive, and then you pray back to him. And so he gives you these downloads. So he's saying, continue to write. They're going to change lives. First, they're going to change yours. They're going to give you growth. They're going to give you increase. They're going to give you int more intimacy. It's going to go so deep, deep dimensions of the father, deep dimensions of the father. You're going to know him. 
You won't be looking to the right. You won't be looking to the left. You're going to focus on the finish line, Jesus, your true love. That's what he's saying. And the story he gave me was, uh, and the Bible says that Martha invited Jesus into her home. And then she went to work. And she got busy. And Mary, her sister, came and sat at the Lord's feet. And she listened to what he had to say. And Martha looked up and said, but Lord, do you see my sister sitting there? Do you care? Tell her to get up and help me. And Jesus said unto her, Martha, Martha, you're worried and concerned about many things. But what Mary has chosen the good thing, the best thing, and that's to sit and listen, to wait upon the voice of the shepherd. For I am speaking to you, says God. This is not the season to be busy. This is the season to hear and to respond. For when I declare a thing, I have the power to bring it to pass. But many are running to and fro trying to find me. But if they will sit and listen, I will direct her steps, says the Lord. He says, tell my daughter, the steps of a righteous woman are ordered by me. I am ordering your steps, says the Lord. And yea, my daughter, you are one that needs to let the balloon go. Let it go. Let it go. All your pain, all your hurt, everything, your frustrations are in this balloon tonight. And God says, let it come up to the throne room of grace. I'm going to pop it. And I'm going to cover it. And the power of it is no longer in your life. For tell my daughter tonight she's free. She's delivered and she's made whole. I heard him say, it's time to walk in your newfound freedom in me. Because all I hear is you have been identified by him and you have his mark. Yes. I know that we don't normally do this, but... I have to say, because it falls right here, I heard the word worshiper, and I feel like where this fits is out of that season, you're going to write songs in this hour, and you're going to carry revival. Revival is inside of you. You carry the seed of this generation. You're part of many. There are many like you he's calling, but you have revival inside of there, and you're going to lead worship. And I just see that anointing on your life. I saw that way back there, but it just fit right in. I wanted to add to it. Okay, Diana has a word for oh, I'm not sure. Um, I have a word for David. And when he began to talk about Dawsonville, and I thought, wow, that just fits in. The Lord has called you, David, and there have been times you've been hidden in a cave. And it wasn't, you aren't there because you didn't do the right thing, because you have done the right things. But you were placed into this place, and you've been in a place of sort of frustration, no? <laughs> anyway, and the Lord says, just wait it out. Because when David was placed in the cave, and all of these other guys, all these misfits, that were broke, they had screw-ups, and they came in the cave with him. And they all were in there. But when they came out, they were David's mighty men. And God is making you, David, into one of his mighty men. He is making you for one of these last day. You will be part of the remnant. And he's building that into you. And he's raising you up. And there is a call on you. And he knows you by name. In fact, he called you by that name. Your mother may have thought that she gave you that name. But the Lord gave you that name. So, Lord, I thank you for David. I thank you for the great and mighty man that you are building in him. I thank you, Lord, that he will be a leader. He will take his place out there with his army, Lord, and he will stand strong. 
and he will follow you to the ends of the earth. Thank you, Lord, for David. I also have a word for you, David. The Lord's. this is your night. He's breaking some stuff off you. He says, you are not insignificant. You are not insignificant. He created you so beautifully, so amazingly beautifully. You're going to gather that army. But as you sit and you read his word, the Holy Spirit is literally going to teach you. He's going to start to, and I know you've heard the scripture before, he's going to renew your mind, but he is going to literally lock his word in your mind. He is going to whitewash your mind with the word. He's going to water it. He's going to wash it. He's going to put the blood on it. And you're going to, he's going to cause you literally because you're going to fall in love with Jesus over and over and over again. That desire is going to be insatiable. You won't be, ever be able to quench it. You're going to be on a quest here forward. And he's going to change the way you think. Because you will think like a kingdom man. You will think from the kingdom of God and not from an earthly realm up to the kingdom of God. The enemy has twisted it all these years and the father says, no, the way you think, you think differently than most people. And so the father says, tonight, embrace that gift because it's from me to think as is in the kingdom of God. He's going to bring it down. He's going to, he's going to almost like translate it for you and you'll be able to release it to those that you encounter. Because you are a man that will change lives. You are a man that will rescue many in the name of Jesus. Wait one second. Um, do you have something? No? Okay. I'm on here. What's cool? D is it David real fast? I'm just letting you know, um, while they were talking about you, God's just like, um, it's time to get running. And it's the coolest thing. And I had to look at um, what's up, but God said that it has to do with where, like, a chariot gets outrun. And so then I looked it up, and it's in 1 Kings 18.46. But it's, I, I didn't know. All I know is God's like talking about you outrunning a chariot. And I was like, what? And so, and it talks about the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah. And you might want to go look at it. I'll write down exactly where it's at. But all God was saying out loud about you is let's get running. And it's really good. I actually have word about running too, which is kind of funny. You have to, I should know your name by now, but I forget. It's, it's good to meet you. Can I give you a word? Okay, so when you were praying earlier, in the spirit I saw you running. And, in, and at first it looked to me like you were running after the Lord. But then God like expanded the picture for me. And as fast as you were running toward the Lord, he was running faster back towards you. And the Lord wants you to know that he's seen you draw near to him. He's drawing near to you. And this is going to be a season of sweet intimacy with him. I know, sorry. I don't really know Marsha, but I, I, I know her from 10 years ago, and I really only remembered your face and, and all that. But I have a word for you. Is that okay? So I, I just heard the Lord saying that there's, there's, right now you feel, which is wrong, because we don't go by our feelings, that you're in a place of sadness or grief for some reason. There's been, um, you know, the Bible says hope deferred makes the heart sick, but joy comes in the morning. And you're in a place where the Father is bringing great change in your life. There's not going to be anything that's familiar. And it's almost like being on a surfboard in the waves and you've never surfed before. And you keep falling off and falling off. And you don't really catch the wave and you're not sure-footed. And the Father says, that's been designed by me because I will cause you to be sure-footed. I am calling you into a place inside me that you've never gone before. It won't be familiar. It is by faith. Just like when you received me as your Lord and Savior, he says, by faith, you will now partner with, we, with me and walk in this completely new direction. He's saying it is from me. He's asking you to put down many, many things that you've done in the past, the way you've ministered, ministries you've been involved in. And he's saying, I am coveting you. I am a jealous God, and this is my time with you because I am equipping you 
for a purpose and a season that's ahead. So he said, don't be disappointed. He's not breaking your heart. He's actually rebuilding areas in your heart where they were a heart of stone. He's giving you a heart of flesh. And as that first song was, was I love that first song that says, I'm drenched in love. He literally wants to drench you in his love. So he's saying, my daughter, will you receive my love? Because I will wash all that away. And it will be in the sea of forgetfulness. You won't remember the hurt. You won't remember the disappointment. You won't remember the pain, only from a teaching perspective. But the damage it did to your emotions and your heart, the father says, I can take that. Will you let me? Will you receive the drenching, the cleansing, the healing of my love? Because that's how much he loves you. So he's taking you beyond where you are, way beyond where you are. What you know now is minute compared to what he's going to release to you. I heard the Lord say, I am the resurrection. I am your life. The I am has come to resurrect everything in you this night. Know this day, says the Lord, I have lifted up your bowed down heart. And I'll put my glory, my power, and my majesty upon thee. For I'm opening the eyes of your heart to see the depths, the width, the breadth, the height of my love for you. Run into my arms. Let me embrace you, says the Lord. For my love is real, it's tangible, it's strengthening you, it's building you up, it's removing every weight that the enemy put on you tonight. God says the assignments of the enemy has been canceled. The power of darkness that have come to beat you down, we rebuke it in the name of Jesus. And the joy of the Lord. Is hovering all around you. And the love of God is raining down. And he's soaking you in this love tonight. He's saturating you. He's so saturating you that that was bound you now has loose you. Because you're walking under the weight of his love. I saw it. And I saw him take your heart and put it in his hand. And he began to breathe the breath of life into it. And as he was breathing upon your heart, it began to beat to another rhythm. And it wasn't the rhythms of the past because he says the past is over. It's the rhythm of Christ. And as you look to Christ, I heard him say, now she shall experience me. That that you've been asking for, you're about to come into. My love, my goodness, my kindness. I am your father. Let me wrap my arms around you and father you. Uh, this goes along with what OJ, but I was, uh, this is kind of a corporate thing. If you don't mind bowing your head, uh, I just started seeing like vices on people's heads, squeezing their heads, uh, pressure on your head. And uh, this comes along with the, the second Corinthians chapter 10 verses three through five, the the devil is coming against your mind. It's, it's bringing pressure in your life. Anybody have a lot of pressure in their mind going through stress in their, in their thinking, thinking wrong thoughts. I mean, this is stuff OJ was preaching about, but there's a battle going on right now in, in the room with people and it's coming against your mind in a strong way. There's a, uh, there is a real enemy. He is, and I, I don't say this to give you fear. I say this to give you hope. God is here to set that vice, those things that you didn't put on yourself. The spirit of, of uh, anger, the spirit, there's some spirits that are just 
all floating around in here from, from your past, from generations. And I don't need to name them. We just need to cast them out. Jesus just came in the room and spoke a word, and they left. All unclean spirits in the name of Jesus must flee. Must flee. Because Jesus is telling you to flee. Bow down and back out of this room. Go to the dry places. And Lord, I pray for these people, that all these spirits that left. I pray that you fill them with the power and the Holy Spirit. Revelation. Replace those void places. Love. Replace those places. Hope. There's a spirit of excitement that's in the room. And some of you can't receive it. I don't know when OJ was preaching, other people were prophesying over here. There's an excitement coming back to the body of Christ. And I'm not saying you have to feel good all the time, but there's an excitement. You just have to, God wants you to step into the excitement. It says when you pray in tongues, if you have a prayer, personal prayer language, the prayers will encourage you. I go around all the time just praying in the spirit because it, it the Bible says it encourages you. Who wants to be encouraged tonight? If you don't, haven't been filled with the Spirit, do not speak in a prayer language. Guess what? We can pray for you tonight. So, Lord, the spirit of discouragement, any spirits of death or suicide, I cast them out in Jesus' name. All the families, spirits, you have no rights besides the Holy Spirit to do anything here tonight. This is a time that people are walking into freedom. I see some of you standing up spiritually, walking out of that shell you've been in and coming into the power and the authority of God. Who wants that? That goes along with dying to who you are. If you need extra prayer at the end, let me know and we'll pray for you, some of us. Amen. I think yeah, this is on. Thank you, everybody, for coming. We really are excited you came. If anybody does need prayer, Chris and Joanna or Bill or um, Diana, myself, um, any of the leadership, Ken, OJ, you know, go find them. Get some prayer. Thank you again. Thank you.